birthday. I'm taking her out for dinner. Uh-huh. Listen, I just got here. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Have fun. Bye. Trisha? Trish? Continue to wait for Eddie Como, the alleged College Hill rapist, who's expected to arrive here shortly to stand trial for the murder and sexual assault of Trisha Hayes, age 20, who died during her ordeal. Although this is the only charge Eddie Como faces today, he is accused of three more vicious sexual assaults. The three surviving rape victims, Carol Rosen, Meg Pesaturo, and Jillian Hayes, sister of Trisha Hayes, formed what they called the Survivors Club and were extremely active publicly in finding and apprehending their attacker. Yes? I don't know what to wear. Wear whatever makes you feel strong. What did you do with the clothes that you were wearing that day? When the police finally gave them back to me, I took them to the dry cleaners, but I never picked them up. sweetheart that's what today is about not being scared anymore bill we just received word that eddie como should be arriving here shortly and when he does he'll be greeted by dozens of protesters many of them carrying placards some of them will support victims stop violent crime they are clearly here in support of the survivors club and they are going to show their anger against the accused eddie como more on this breaking news story as it develops You're not really going, are you? Why wouldn't I go? Why would you want to expose yourself to that monster? You're not even testifying today. You're just punishing yourself. No, Dan. Today, he gets punished. Survivors 
club. But I mean, he hasn't even had a day in court, and already they're saying he's guilty. I mean, where's the justice in that? She can't remember anything, and why should she put herself through all of this? We have to be there. It's important. Getting this this bastard off the street is the next step in our recovery. This is where Meg starts to get her life back. Do I look like I feel strong? Yeah, you look great. determine the verdict against Eddie Como. Meg, do you remember anything yet? Will you be able to testify at all? Jillian, Jillian, how are you feeling about seeing Eddie Como? Please, please, the answer is no Eddie comment. How do you feel about this? Carol, are you nervous sitting into court today? Meg, will you make? We expect you to testify. Okay, people, enough questions, enough questions. How do you explain your DNA being at the crime scene? Eddie, Eddie, are you guilty? Did you do it? He's gonna be okay. Eddie, how are you feeling? Hey, Roan Griffin, I thought you quit. Life's all about timing. So, one down, Eddie Como, College Hill rapist. Single headshot. Entrance wound, top of the skull. Exit wound beneath the chin. Rifle shot came from the roof. Then a few minutes later, there's an explosion in the printing office parking lot. Carbon? They'll know. Detective Joseph Fitzpatrick. You can call me Fitz. Rowan Griffin. I was lead on the Como case. What do you got so far? Uh, all anybody saw was a streak of black sprinting across the roof. They couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. We're canvassing the reporters right now. One of them might have got the shooter on film. Uh, I wouldn't go to the press on this. I'd go straight to the survivors club. If anyone wanted to turn Eddie into liver pate, it'd be one of the three women he attacked. Got my money on Jillian Hayes. 
to what he did to her no sister. No woman took that shot. That shot was bought and paid for by Meg Pesaturo's father. Pesaturo? As in Vinnie Pesaturo, the Marino family's favorite bookie? That's the guy. Interesting group. happened today on the news after what you've been through this one's on the house thank you hey free tea who said there weren't benefits to getting raped well i for one am happy this is a great day in america you know what we need we need champagne and the chocolate cake the press would love that Eddie Como dies and the Survivors Club eats cake. You know, I, I feel good about it. Yeah, I feel good. Does that make me a horrible person? No, it makes you human. The man who ruined your life is gone. You can feel safe. <sighs> and we don't have to worry about testifying at the trial, no. Crime scene pictures of our naked bodies passed around for strangers to look at. Thank you, Dad Eddie. Yeah. Did you say chocolate cake? Jillian's the one that talks for the group. If you want a straight answer, you gotta go through her. Look who's here. Fitz. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, Jillian Hayes, Carol Rosen, Meg Pesaturo. Detective Sergeant Roan Griffin. He's investigating the shooting at the courthouse. Did you see his face? Excuse me? Did you see Eddie Como's face? What was left of it? Did he live long enough to realize he'd been blown away? Please tell me there was a lot of pain. Did he suffer? It was probably pretty quick. Ah, oh, it's too bad. What do you want? We think it would be best if you ladies came with us down to the station. No, thanks, but no. We like it here. They have a good tea. We've had the tea down at the station. It tastes horrible. This is a great day for us. Eddie Como gets shot and we graduate from rape victims to murder suspects. Murder suspects? Sounds exciting. Do they have prison jumpsuits at Prada? What are you saying? While we didn't kill Eddie ourselves, Detective Griffin thinks we might have arranged it. You had motive and you had opportunity. That gives us probable cause. A murder is a murder. Look, it's uh, clearly a case of diminished capacity. You didn't know what you were doing. No, for a higher gun requires premeditation. Sounds like you've been thinking this over. You need to know what you need to know when you need to know it. And you don't have probable cause, you just have a hunch. Now get out and leave us alone and next time bring a warrant. Enjoy your celebration, ladies. We'll be in touch. He looks so familiar. Cute? Uh, I, I mean it. I know him from somewhere. Yeah, most handsome men look familiar. Tell me about Jillian. Well, she owned her own business, a fairly successful marketing firm. Sold it when her sister was killed. Word has it she pocketed a bundle. Enough to pay an assassin? Oh, yeah. She has the strongest motive, and clearly she's been studying her own defense. Does she have a brother or a boyfriend? Just a sister. Now, I still like Vinny Pesaturo, you know, the enraged father with mafia ties. But there's something about this whole amnesia thing that bothers me. I mean, it's been a year, and Meg still can't remember anything? Central Park jogger still doesn't remember. What about Carol? Does she have money? No way. She and her husband have this house that bleeds them dry. At least that's what it looked like a year ago when we pulled the financials. Listen, I'm going to go back to the parking lot and follow up on the crispy corpse. Hell hath no fury, huh? Say, Fitz. Can I have a copy of the Eddie Como file? The College Hill Rapist was a good investigation, Griffin. We had motive, we had opportunity, and we had DNA. Now, Eddie Como raped those women. End of story. So why did Eddie Como, who left behind no hair, no fiber, no fingerprints, leave behind semen? Because criminals are stupid. It is inconsistent. 
Como figures he's smarter than the average bear, and so he uses a douche to wash out the semen, and it works up to a point. But he doesn't realize he's washing it out onto the bed and onto the sheets, and we sample everything. Do you have any priors, any history of violence with his girlfriends? No and no. Griffin, we did not plant DNA evidence. We did not frame Eddie Como. Hey, relax. I know you didn't frame him. That's what worries me. Eddie Como is dead. But I'm still angry. Just because he's gone doesn't mean we're all going to magically move on with our lives. No. I'm still afraid of the dark and silence. I play the TV all day and all night. I sleep on the couch because I'm afraid of my bed. And when Dan's away, I sit in the bathtub with a loaded gun, just in case. Stupid, isn't it? No. No. It doesn't matter what happened to Eddie. It doesn't change anything. It won't bring Trisha back. That's why they think we did it. That's why they think we did it. I mean, even, even if we'd won the case, the most Eddie would have gotten was time in prison. Trisha's death wasn't premeditated. A judge and a jury wanted him off the streets, but we wanted him dead. Yeah, but somebody else wanted him dead, too. Now, who? Who wanted him dead more than the three of us? That's it. That's it. We, we, we don't talk about this anymore. It's over. Eddie's dead, and it's over. We can talk about our feelings, but not about the specifics of the case. Yeah, but we don't know the specifics of the case. Do we? Do we? Did you get my messages? Carol, talk to me. Are you okay? No, Dan, I'm not okay. Thanks for asking. Eddie Como, the accused college hill rapist, was shot and killed at approximately 8.45 this morning yeah. while entering the Lake Judicial Complex. So I guess this means someone just saved the city a ton of money. I have no other statements to make at this time. Hey, Griff, how are you? Hey, Griff. Hey, Griff. Hey, welcome back. Griffin. Morelli's office now. Talk to me. Well, Jack and his team are on the roof of the state printing office, examining all the evidence. We're assuming it's a professional hit. How many vengeance cases you know of involved a hired killer? Your typical irate father, distraught husband, shows up, blows the guy away, up close and personal. They're obsessed with revenge, not justice. Yeah, unless you're hooked into the mob. It's not the women. I've known them for a year. They're, they're activists. They took their mission to the press. Then just when they're about to get justice, bang, Eddie Como gets blown away. We had DNA. I had DNA on O.J. too. You'll be working with Fitzpatrick. Uh, Griffin, can I have a word with you? Got that I just want you to know how bad we all feel about your wife's death. Thank you. I appreciate that. You up for this? 
You have my medical. The shrinks gave me a clean bill. I'm fine. Detective Griffin, I'm investigating your husband's death. I'm here to help you. Then why haven't you arrested those bitches for killing my Eddie? Now look at me. I'm hot. Plain and simple. I've been beating away boys since I was 12. I know how to make a man happy. So you were with Eddie on the nights those women were attacked? Yes, I was. Not that that would believe me. We had an apartment then. Eddie was making good money at the blood center. Did anyone see you together on those nights? <laughs> No. We looked into all that. There was never any proof. Eddie had a tough job. When he got home, he was tired. All he wanted to do was lie on the couch, watch a rented movie, and put his hands on my belly so he could feel the baby kick? That's your college hill, rapist. The state found Eddie's DNA at the scene. <laughs> hey, screw this! Cops fake DNA all the time! Everybody knows that! Hey, hang on a second, will you, please? Look, I'm just trying to question her for a second. Yeah, whatever, then I'm booking her. That dude is still out there, and those women killed the wrong guy. Tanya? I'm gonna have a police officer drive you and your family home. Oh, are you crazy? She almost killed me. Please, feel free to call me anytime. Take her out that way, would you? Oh, Fitz, I'm sorry. She's not gonna do us any good locked up. This isn't over. Those three are killers and they're gonna pay. You okay? Terrified. Calm down. She's home. That's all that matters. I'm fine, Mom. Please stop treating me like a baby. People have been calling here. The, the news people were here. The police came to talk to us. You talked to the police? I told you never to talk to the police unless Daddy and I are with you. I didn't say anything. I never say anything. She thinks that if we watch her every moment, then it will somehow undo everything that's happened. Please, come in. Drink. At least the guy's dead. Maybe Meg will get better now. Remember things, get her life back. Better she should forget all of it. Thanks for bringing my Meg back. Mr. Pesaturo, they'll want to talk to you. Let them talk. I assume they're going to want to talk to you too, huh?
witness statements, preliminary evidence reports, and I pulled the lady's financial statements. How much money was missing from Julian Hayes' account? How much? 20,000. That's enough to hire a really good killer. Yeah, well, she's not the only one. Dan Rosen is in hock up to his eyebrows. He took out a second mortgage on his house six months ago for $100,000. Then last week, he liquidated one of his brokerage accounts. What about Pesatero's accounts? <laughs> I think we all know he wouldn't need money to hire a shooter. Fitz, turn the TV on. What's going on? You got a problem. Late last night, a witness came forward who could place Mr. Como halfway across town on the night and at the time of the second attack. Here is a computer-generated record of Eddie Como's transaction at the time of the assault. Well, this new information cast doubt that Eddie Como, who was shot dead early yesterday morning, was indeed the College Hill rapist. Does that mean the real rapist is still out there? Video cards don't contain photo IDs. Anybody could have come in that night and used Como's card. Anyway, why does this kid show up now? Where the hell's he been the last six months? What the hell are you doing here? Would you believe I was in the neighborhood? No. Get away from my car. What is it, my aftershave? You know, I don't have to answer any of your questions without a lawyer present. Well, can your lawyer explain the large cash withdrawal you recently made from your savings account? Oh, you've been busy, detective. I needed the money. What for? Personal reasons. What personal reasons? Personal reasons unrelated to Eddie's demise. You're gonna have to prove that, you know. I've had a tough day, Detective, and I'm not in the mood for your dashing repartees. Don't you have some other women you can go and harass? Not really. Really? No girlfriend? Sister? Wife? I'm not married anymore. Look, can I go now? I'm heading to the gym to run. I used to run outside, but Eddie Como stole my life, so now I run inside where it's safe. Well, what do you say we run outside together? Safety in numbers. Don't worry, I'll run slow. Just keep out of my way. I did. 
What, are you training for something? Uh, I ran to clear my mind. What's troubling you? Oh, oh, that's subtle, detective. You learned that in detective school? Jillian, call me Griffin. No, thank you, detective. Call me Miss Hayes. Miss Hayes? Are you certain it was Eddie Como who attacked you and your sister that night? I'm very certain. Never had a doubt? Never. Did you see the news tonight? Eddie's lawyer has new evidence. Yeah, I saw it. But even if Eddie returned a video in Warwick, it doesn't prove that he didn't later head into Bellingham. There's no rule that rapists can't run errands. How good was the DNA evidence? What do you mean? What was it, a four-point match, an eight-point match, ten points? They said the sample was a match. A match is a match. Not necessarily. What are you getting at? Well, what if Eddie Como had a brother? Hey, do me a favor, Miss Hayes. Look me in the eye and tell me you had nothing to do with Eddie Como's murder. Well, that's pretty hypocritical. Really? Why? Because I know who you are. You led the case against the serial killer, David Price. Oh, well, you were doing your research. And month after month, women were disappearing, and there you were every night on the news talking about how you were going to catch this I guy. I did catch that guy. After 11 months, what took you so long? I mean, he was right under your nose. He lived next door to you. And when you did catch him, you went after him, and you would have killed him. But two officers pulled you off just in time. So I'm asking you, if I killed Eddie, would you blame me? Can't answer that, can you, Detective Griffin? You're right. It did take too long. I didn't catch him until after he tortured and murdered my wife. So if you did have Eddie Como killed, I might not blame you, but I would arrest you. Being a cop's all I have left. I'll wait till you get in.
Griffin. What? Tied up with latex strips. Copycat. Pardon me. The latex strips and how they were used was in the paper, but we never mentioned anything about this. Same brand that was used on the others. All right, so Eddie had an accomplice, or maybe maybe a, a cellmate he told everything to, okay? So the guy spends the last year fantasizing about the stories that Eddie told him. And then Eddie gets shot. The guy figures he could do it. He can become the College Hill rapist. That's an awfully big leap. Twelve fifteen. She's late. She'll be here. Ah. Hey. Can I have a cabinet, please? So this is the first meeting of the survivors' club. There's murder suspects, and not rape victims. That's not very funny. Well, I did my bit. Shot my husband last night. You what? Oh my God. Thanks. That was where I usually am when I'm alone in the house at night. In the bathtub, with my gun, bottle of wine, I think it was a 91 Bordeaux, I heard something. I swear I called out Dan's name, but he didn't answer. So I pulled the trigger, grazed him in the shoulder. It's going to be fine. Doctor was impressed. Should have shot him when he didn't come home that night. Well, I lay there. That man did unspeakable things to me. I prayed that Dan would come home and rescue me. Where was my husband? Why would he not come home? Well, you said he was working late. Yeah, that's what I said. The truth is, he was... My husband couldn't save me from being raped because he was... He was screwing his girlfriend. Carol, are... Are you sure? Have you talked to him? How do I bring that up, Jillian? Hey, Dan. I'll apologize for being raped. If you'll apologize for having an affair, I can't do that. I couldn't take that. I can't trust that he won't leave me. I already lost myself. I can't... I just... I couldn't take that. I think my dad is having me followed again. He won't admit it, but I think I saw the guy. I guess it's his way of trying to protect you. We didn't kill Eddie. But if one of us did, we would stand beside her and we would be grateful. And if that makes us guilty too, then fine. You'd all be willing to go to jail to protect the one who did this. You'd be looking at life. I came here to give you one last chance. What do you mean, a last chance? I came to tell you something before it hits the papers. There's been another attack. What? A girl was attacked last night in her apartment. She was raped and murdered. Well, Eddie's death didn't rid the world of crime. She was tied with latex strips. She was raped and then stabbed to death. Eddie Como lives was written on her wall. was she? Her name was Sylvia Blair. She was a student at the university. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Eddie. He's the one following me. I know it. No, it's not him. Eddie is dead. It's, it's, it's some guy who, who killed his girlfriend. It's someone trying to confuse the police. There was evidence found at the scene that only the killer could know about. Evidence that never made the papers. So... What if Eddie Coleman was innocent? What if it was another guy all along? Are you still willing to go to jail if one of you had the wrong guy killed? 
No, it, it, it can't be. Kenneth. No, this is absurd. You were just trying to get us to doubt each other. Miss Hayes. Think about it, ladies. Let's go. Miss Hayes, what do you think about this newest attack? Does it prove Eddie Como's innocent? What about the defense attorney's new witness? I have nothing to say. Jillian, did you persecute an innocent man? What about his wife and his baby? What do you have to say to them? There is no new evidence that Eddie Como enough. was... What do you think Sylvia back Blair off. would say to that? Miss Hayes, you haven't answered my That's question. That's enough, I said. You, back Jillian, off. did you persecute an innocent Wrap man? Wrap it up! Thank you. I hate those people. Listen, about the other day, I was too... I appreciate it. You learned to build walls. I built those walls. Then I put a moat around them. We've both been through the same sort of thing. You know, we, we both lost someone that we loved. A hell of a thing to have in common. Yeah, it's a hell of a thing. You can call Father Rendell at the Cranston Parish, and he'll tell you. Tell me what? Why I took the money out. I set up a trust fund for Eddie Jr., not out of any sense of guilt, but because, well, you know, the sins of the father. He wasn't even born. It wasn't his fault. Tanya doesn't know, no one knows, not even the Survivors Club. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Griffin. We just got a hit on the deep fried shooter in the parking lot. Shall we? I had a military record. Gus Jacob Olson, formerly of New York, and get this, he spent eight years in the Army as a sharpshooter. The higher gun theory is looking better and better. I don't know. I still can't believe those women were capable of it. I'm going to talk to Dan Rosen. Why don't you see if Olson spent any time in this area? Griffin, get in here. Not you, Fitz. I got a call from Corporal Carpentier at the prison. Great. Afraid so. Good old David Price is reaching out to the police department. He claims to have information pertaining to the murder of Eddie Como, and he wants to talk to you immediately. Damn it! You shouldn't be surprised. Your face is on the news. And you know how he likes to yank your chain. I'm not suggesting you talk to Price directly. Call Carpentier. See what he has to say. See if there's anything to it. Uh, what happened with Jillian Hayes? I heard a story about the missing money checks, huh? Well, that alone doesn't clear. What about the Rosens? We're working on it. Is your husband home, Mrs. Rosen? No. I called his office. He's not there. Well, he's not here. Mrs. Rosen, I, I just need to ask him a couple of questions. He liquidated his brokerage account. Do you know anything about that? You think he hired an assassin? You think he spent the money to kill my rapist detective? My husband doesn't love me that much. Mrs. Rosen? Mrs. Rosen? 
It's Detective Griffin. I need a code blue ambulance at 717 Alpine Drive. Quickly, please, yeah. Looks like she overdosed on pills and alcohol. I knew she was upset, but I... She's on there. Dan, how is she? Apparently she took all her sleeping pills and a bottle of wine. They gave her a charcoal slurry. If he hadn't found her when he did, she'd be dead. Where were you? I was working. Working? Or playing with your girlfriend. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Dan. She knows. Carol thinks I'm sleeping with another woman? That, that's crazy. I love my wife. He's telling the truth. It's casinos. That's where he spends his time. Dan Rosen isn't a cheater. He's a gambler. Oh. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Detective? Excuse me. Yeah, Griffin. Tanya Como's holding a press conference at a law firm in downtown Bellingham. Her lawyer's announcing a $50 million wrongful death lawsuit he's bringing against the city of Bellingham and the Bellingham Police Department. The mayor is having a heart attack. Great. Any news on Sylvia Blair yet? But the mayor has given us carte blanche to fast track anything you need. All right. Okay, thank you. Waiting for someone? Thank you for taking care of Carol. Just doing my job. No, it was more than that. But I don't suppose you want compliments from a murder suspect. Why didn't you tell me Carol thought Dan was having an affair? Well, I really didn't think that it had anything to do with the case. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Yeah, I've been getting letters. What do you mean? I got letters from Eddie while he was in prison, telling me that, that he didn't do it, threatening me over and over again. I got one the day he was shot, and I assumed it was mailed before, but... I got another one today. Today? Thank you. What are you doing here? Well, don't mind me. I'm just watching your house. Make sure you're safe. With your eyes closed? Hmm. Well, I'm using the force. It's the best way. I see. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. I'm on duty. Okay. But I'm up. 
off in five minutes. Four minutes. Three, two, one. Cream. Yeah. Sugar? <laughs> sure. <laughs> face of the earth. I told my wife about the case. You know, I, I didn't ordinarily do that, but I was lost. Everyone was looking at me and I didn't have a clue. And the ninth woman disappeared and this time she was from our neighborhood. Sydney was scared. And I was busy. I was out working the case. I, I wasn't home to make her feel safe. So I asked our neighbor and good friend, David Price, to stay with her from time to time. I sent David Price to look after my wife. I wasn't there to make her feel safe. It wasn't your fault. He didn't know. I was so focused on being a hero, on trying to save the women of the city, that I was too blind to save my own wife. I wanted to kill him. I remember telling myself he needs to die. You were right. You were right. My mother was a singer. She wasn't home much. I was 15 when my sister was born, and my mom brought her home from the hospital and put her in my arms and, and told me to name her. Trisha sounded exotic to me. It was her birthday that night, and I was going to take her out, but I was running late, something, something silly at the office, and then the traffic was really bad. So while I was driving around the city, my sister was being... And I keep thinking, Griffin, you know, if I'd been on time, maybe I could have saved her. Yourself. You never had a chance. <laughs> what? You called me Griffin. Good morning. Morning. Something smells good. I uh, worked my way through college as a short order cook. I haven't had fresh eggs at my house in a year. Hi. You are very beautiful in the morning. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Hey, Jack, how you doing? Got the DNA back from the Sylvia Blair case. A perfect ten-point match. 
I'll talk to you later. Yeah. And they got the DNA back from the Sylvia Blair case. It's a perfect ten-point match. Well, who is it? Eddie Como. What? He's dead. Let's be logical about this. What? What if someone had somehow gotten a hold of Eddie's semen and planted it at the scene? Now, you see, semen only tests positive for 72 hours. So if someone had gotten a hold of Eddie's semen, it would have had to have been fresh, and the guy was behind bars. It's impossible. Damn it. Sending me letters telling me he's going to kill me. I believe him. Where are we going? The tuck of the son of a bitch who's probably behind all this. Sorry about this, Griff. Thanks. This is Julian Hayes. Her sister was. I remember. I am sorry. They're bringing Price down to the rear hall. They need another 10 minutes. Personally, I don't think he knows Jack. Tell that to the brass. Carpache. Go on, go on. How's he adapting to life here? Better than you'd think. Bit of a celebrity, really. Serial killers aren't usually too popular around here, but this guy's different. But... But what? Uh, when he first got here, he was in the shower. Three guys surrounded him to give him a friendly hello indoctrination to prison life. Good point, Jake. They wanted to show him how friendly they could be to small pretty boys. Someone alerts the guards. They go running down there, expecting to find carnage. They do. Price somehow convinced one of the guys to kill the other two. He's good with people. That's his gift. Miss Hayes, if you wouldn't mind, take a seat here in observation, please. Thank you, George. You'll be okay. Wait, hold this for me. Is that you, neighbor? Well, hey there, long time. Welcome to my new classroom. Granted, my students are the scum of the earth, but they're a captive audience. You look good, Griff. Don't tell me you've started dating again. Thought it would be harder than that to replace Cindy. in the newspaper that you've been hanging out with the Fab Three. Jillian, Carol, and Meg. Oh, my. Jillian is quite beautiful. <laughs> you know, I think she actually might have better legs than Cindy did. Love that she wears those spike heels. Mmm. Rate me pumps, isn't that what they're called? Did I hit a nerve? Sorry. <laughs> oh. Tell me about Sylvia Blair. You know what I miss the most, Griff? Those dinners at your house. I used to love watching the two of you together. Cindy and Griff. <laughs> what was the name of her assailant? Don't be rude. Just want to catch up. Oh, which reminds me, did you get my letters? I mean, I would have emailed, but uh, they took my computer. I want the name of the man who raped and murdered Sylvia Blair. Hey now, Griff. <laughs> no need to be physical with me here. As you can see, I'm quite helpless. You have 10 seconds to tell me something useful, or I'm out of here. Five seconds. I know the name of the real College Hill rapist. I don't believe you. Time's up. I'm out of here. Oh, 
All right, all right. He puts Como's little swimmers into each douche, and then he uses it on the ladies. We already know that. Did you know it was my idea? He chose Eddie to be the patsy, but I told him exactly what to look for. I was the mastermind. I heard you moved. Too many memories? How's he doing? It's a full moon tonight, Chris. How does he do it? I won't answer that yet. Well, I'm not going to answer that yet. But it is the key question, isn't it? Too many memories? How did he do it? How does one steal a man's mambo jumbo? You don't know anything, Price. Professor Price. I have earned the title. How did he do it? So what's so hard to believe? That I helped him pick the women or that you still can't do a damn thing to stop me? You got a serial rapist on the loose, buddy boy. Someone who looks like Eddie Como and tests like Eddie Como. In other words, you have absolutely no idea who you're looking for. So you shut your mouth and you listen to me for a change because I do know who he is. And you're gonna give me something for it. Or are you gonna see my face on the five o'clock news? I'll be telling a frightened public how some overpumped, overranked, mentally unstable state trooper is willfully disregarding critical information. No matter what you say, no matter what you know, you get nothing. It's a full moon tonight, Griff. I can guarantee you a fresh body. I can guarantee you a six by six foot confinement cell. You want to punish me? Or you want to be a hero and save all those pretty little girls who are going to die? Really, Griff, I go to the press and I tell them that the same guy who put me in the slammer a year ago refuses to protect their what little girls. What do you girl? want? I want three hours standard hardship leave. You have till noon to decide. I don't make deals with murderers. Sure you do. You make deals all the time. So go ahead, ask the question. David, why do you want three hours? Well, thank you for asking, detective. I want to see my daughter. No prison clothes, no interview rooms, just she and I face to face. It's probably the only time I'm ever going to see her, so. I want it to be good. Face it, her grandparents are never gonna bring her here. Never gonna bring her here. Her grandparents? Vinny and Lori Pesatoro. Didn't Meg tell you? <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, Griff, we had a baby together a few years ago. Me and Meg. Hey, where are you going? I kept a lock of your wife's hair. <laughs> Come back soon. I'll be here. <laughs> Here's the deal, Chief. David Price claims to know who the real College Hill rapist is, and he'll give us that information provided we give him a three-hour personal visit with his long-lost daughter, Molly Pesatoro. You gotta be kidding. No, you heard right. Jeez. We have two hours to decide. Okay, I'll get back to you. Fine. I'm heading over there. You don't think that Meg had anything to do with it? Maybe. Price set this whole thing up to get himself out of prison. Meg would never do that. You sure about that? We're talking about a woman who doesn't tell you that she had a child with a serial killer. Where is Meg? What do you want? I need you to talk to me, and I need you to talk to me now. Take Molly upstairs. You got a lot of nerve busting in here like this. Your daughter had a relationship with a killer, and you didn't think it was relevant? I'm listening. It was a long time ago. I didn't think it was important. 
What possible connection could he have to these rapes? Meg was only 17. We had no idea that she was involved with anyone until I found her curled up on the bathroom floor crying and pregnant. How did she meet Price? School. He was her high school science teacher. We never saw him together. That's a statutory rape. Why didn't you file a report? Because we didn't want it to ruin her life. You didn't want it to ruin her life. We have relatives upstate. We sent her up there until the baby was born, and then... And when she came back home, I pretended that Molly was my baby. We didn't know Price was a killer until he was arrested. And by then, Molly was a year old, and we, we just wanted to protect her from the truth about her father. So the whole thing was a lie? After the rape, Meg lost her memory. That, you know, that part of it was true. She forgot the whole trauma of the rape. She can't identify the rapist. Price knows he has a daughter, and he wants to see her. No, never. Eddie Como was set up. Price claims that he knows who the rapist is, but he won't tell us unless he can talk to his daughter. I'll never let him see her, never let him see her. That was a redhead. When did you dye her hair black? Last year. After it happened. Tell Mr. Price that he can come and see Molly. Meg. You don't have to do this. These murders have to stop. I should have told you. I didn't know Price was involved in this. We told each other everything. No one tells everything. I killed him. I killed Eddie Como. What? I might as well have. I put him in the news and I kept him there. I hammered the press and the police to indict him. I did everything I could to destroy him. That doesn't make it your fault. Really? Really. I prayed every day that he would die. Jillian, you didn't frame him and you didn't pull the trigger that killed him. David Price is a master of deception. He fooled all of us. All of us. Well, come on. We've got work to do, right? I'm going to sue your ass personally. You can't have me brought down okay, here. Officer, it's okay. When I'm through with Tanya, you, you're going to wish. Sit down. There's something I have to tell you. Do you know about the most recent attack, Sylvia Blair? The DNA found at that scene matched your husband's. That's not possible. Tanya, did Eddie ever give anyone a sample? Was he solicited or...? A sample of his... Yes, Tanya, Eddie's semen was discovered inside Sylvia Blair. What? Eddie was good-looking. He was in good health. He had no diseases. That's the kind they like. It's the kind who likes? They paid cash and we needed it. Eddie was a sperm donor. Let Price out. I think I know a way to find the guy without his help. We made plans for a three-hour release. Just give us one hour to find the guy. It's three. His lawyer's delivering is close to him now. Please. You got till four. Thank you. Where are you, Griffin? Hey, Fitz. Yeah, we're at the Tycho Family Planning Laboratory. We already sold his sperm. It won't take long. We'll get back to you about ten. That sperm donor is supposed to be anonymous? They're anonymous to the recipients, but to the people that work here, doctors, technicians, janitors, anybody could have lifted any sperm sample and planted it at the crime scene. 
This is a list of all our employees in the last two years. All right, that's fantastic. Can you email it here, please? Thanks. Okay, Lisa, the lab's emailing it now. Now, look, I want you to cross-reference it to anyone with a record, especially a sex crime violation of any kind. All right, hurry up, please. Okay. We're done here. Thanks again. Full cavity search. This must be my lucky day. Griffin. It's Fitz. Suspect's name is Ron Vigio. Yes. Wanted on a B&E. Yes. What's his address? 919 Arlington. 919 Arlington. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Meet me there. Uh, bring back up. I think we got him. Out. We have the guy already. All right, all right. I'll try to get the van turned around and back to prison. I want to talk to him. You can't. He raped and killed my sister. He he almost killed me. I want to know why. I want to talk there to him. There's no why with guys like this, Jillian. We have him now. He's going to jail. It's over. It's not over for me. What do you want to do? Let him back inside your head? Revenge is not going to bring you justice, so it will just reduce you to his level. It's over. protecting price he already gave you up he told us everything that's how we caught you Vigio you're an idiot you're not a criminal mastermind your price is pawn Griffin. what what price escaped what <laughs> say Fitz you look like you could use some coffee Oh, where's your boyfriend going? <laughs> Here's the thing. You're gonna tell me what Price is planning. See, and if you don't, 
It's going to go down like this. You're going to reach for that gun. I'm not reaching for no gun. And I'm going to have to shoot you. I'm not reaching for no gun, man. Tell me what Price is planning. Or reach for the gun. Hey, guys! I'm not reaching for no gun here! Shut up! It's crazy, man. You're crazy, huh? You're right, I am crazy. But any judge would understand. I've been under a lot of stress lately. When you reached for my gun, I had to shoot you. Hey, don't move. It might go off. You might live. But you will never be able to walk. Talk, stand, eat, take a... All right, gay, gay, wait, wait! Talk fast. Tell me about Price! This whole thing, man, you got it wrong. This whole thing, it's about you. You ruined his life, man. He wants to ruin yours. Oh. He's going back to his old house. Well, it's actually my house now, because I bought it. I got a hell of a deal on it, too, because... No one wants to buy a house where all these women have been tortured and murdered and killed. <laughs> he's gonna bury another woman there. He's gonna kill her and he's gonna bury her. And he's gonna do it for you. Who's he gonna kill? Who the hell is he? No, I don't know, I swear, he never told me. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be okay. out of there. Hey, where's Jillian? Try to take her home. Come on. Good. Come on! Good thing. Jillian. Price has got her. Honey! I'm home. The fact that Vigil is not here leads me to believe that he has been detained, so we won't have much time to play. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sweet Jillian. I can't understand a word you're saying. What do you want? Nothing from you. This isn't about you, it's about Griffin. He took my life, and I'm gonna take his one piece at a time. You're just one of the little pieces. Unfortunately, we have to leave this place. Can't trust our friend Ron, can we? He won't keep a secret. You try. <laughs> Some entry. Front door, side door, basement. I'll take the basement. Be careful. Wait for backup. I'm gonna kill you, you bitch! City used to come over for barbecues? This is over! I don't think so. Let her go. Let her go. There's no way out. I kill her, I kill you. What's the difference? Life is life. They're not gonna give me extra time to do the bad behavior, are they, Griff? We had video. He told us the whole thing was his idea. Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. It was his plan. You were just along for the ride. None of it was his idea. It was all me. I was the one who hired the shooter in the courtyard. 
I was the one who had him blown up. It was me. Now you put down the gun or I put a bullet in her head. And I'll put a bullet in yours. Fine, we'll go together then. Sorry about your sister. It was an accident. He didn't mean to kill her. <laughs> Latex. Who knew? <laughs> Killing a man is a lot to live with. Oh, yeah? What makes you think I'd hesitate from shooting you? After all you did to us, you don't deserve to live. It's payback time. Jillian. He's not worth it. If you shoot him, you're just like him. You'll go to prison. No, I won't. You can back me up. You can say he attacked me and I shot him in self-defense. Jillian, he's going back to a cage for the rest of his life. That's your revenge. I knew you didn't have it in you. You're weak. Bryce, shut up! Your sister, she fought harder than you did. Jillian, don't do it! This is for my sister, you son of a bitch. Chief! Were you trying to kill me? You're not worth it. It's okay. It's okay. Homicide's got it under control. Easy there, big boy. Oh. <laughs> the bastard belongs in hell. He'll get there soon enough. sure you'd be here. 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. Where else would I be? I didn't know if you'd want me to be after everything. We're the Survivors Club. I think we've proved that we can get through just about anything. Thank you. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. Dan is insistent that we have breakfast together every morning. Oh. How are you feeling? Well, I'm getting there. You know, I miss our phone calls like before. You got us through this. I think it's our turn. Our friendship. That's the one good thing to come out of all of this. Well, that and Griffin. Take to Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say the first time? <laughs>